Hey everybody, it has been a while and yes, new glasses. I look like a complete dork, but I don't care. I can see with my new prescription and it because it's bigger, I don't have to like move my head around to try to look down when I try to read something. Um, so yeah, I know because of my very small face and these big glasses, it's, it's like bringing back like the 80s or the 90s or something. <laughs> Or maybe 70s too. I don't know. I don't remember. I remember my mom having these kinds of big glasses in like the 80s and 90s. But anyway, um, I have been pretty sick lately. Uh, I tried a couple times to do videos and it just, it was, I was just too sick. I just did not feel good. Um, I'm still recovering from a really nasty bout with seasonal allergies where it feels like a head cold. It feels so horrible. Um, and I'm coughing up a bunch of gunk and stuff like that. So it's just, it's awful. I mean, my body didn't ache. My body didn't hurt. Um, part of that's because of all the vitamin supplements I've been taking, um, since, you know, last year, um, when I found out that I needed more vitamin B and D, um, so my body doesn't hurt as much as it used to, but still all this. Yeah. So <clears throat> my throat is still kind of sore. I know I sound awful. Um, but I feel like this is a very important topic to bring up. Um, I have been thinking a lot about a certain person from my past and there are times when I will post memes or, you know, something online and it'll be like, you know, don't sacrifice yourself for others. Like, you know, if someone's being toxic, then you have a right to, you know, get away from them. Um, and that's very true for me because I've had a lot of toxic people in my life. I have like, it doesn't matter if they're family or friends or whatever, if they're toxic, then you have the right to get away from them. You don't have to put yourself through all that. And given my history of being abused heavily by a lot of different people in my life, that rings true. However, the other side of the coin is I could also be a toxic person in someone else's eyes. And that's been true in the past. Um, I guess it's because I had a dream and I know like, oh, you had a dream. Yeah, I had a dream about this guy that I went to high school with and he was one of my best friends and I was not a good person to him in, in community college. Um, I mean, I've had feelings for multiple people, romantic feelings for multiple people at the same time, but I've always tried to be with like just one person at a time, like in an actual relationship. And that's just, that's my choice. But, um, I was going through a lot of terrible things at one point when I went to community college and there was, and I will put this, uh, you know, warning in description, but, um, there was a time when I had suicide ideation where I was actually, I was on that verge of like, I was planning to kill myself. I was planning to unalive myself and there were a lot of factors in it. It wasn't just one thing or another, but I didn't go to that best friend of mine. I knew I could rely on him. I knew that if I went to him and I poured my heart out and used him as a sort of, you know, crutch as a sort of like stability, you know, in this, you know, crazy storm, um, you know, this, this stable kind of, you know, anchor, that's the word I'm looking for anchor. So I, I could have, but I didn't want to. And I know it's from, the outside point of view, people are going to look at me and they're going to judge me and, and say, well, you could have, but you chose not to. Why? And me, I was mentally and emotionally out of whack. Um, that's not an excuse. That's just where my mind was at. But I tried to rationalize that I'm this hot mess. I'm playing to unalive myself. If I try to go to him, he will fully support me and be there for me. And I know even if he hasn't said it, he does have feelings for me and I haven't reciprocated. There was a couple times when I almost made that jump to feel romantic feelings towards him and I didn't because I was afraid to. So I just kind of kept him 
on the side. Like, this is my best friend, but I don't want to, you know, do anything with him. And he never tried to push me. He never tried to do the whole, like, friends with benefits, like, BS. He never tried to, like, he had feelings for me, but he never tried to, like, expect anything from me. You know, he was an actual decent person. Um, and that made me feel bad because I was looking at him like, you are a decent person. I'm not. I have all this darkness in me. I'm planning to not be here in the future. And the logic in my head at that time was, you know what? I'm just going to make him hate me so that when I do go, then it won't be as bad for him. Like that was the logic in my head. It is that sound logic? No, <laughs> I, I can admit to that just being, no, that's, that's not good. Was I a complete mess and like, yeah, I was a complete mess and there was all this darkness in my heart, this anger. It didn't help that at the time there was a lot going on where there were, there were other guys who were very abusive and toxic towards me. <coughs> I'm sorry. I said I'm recovering. Um, but I didn't want to go to him. I didn't want to drag him into that because he would have done anything to help me, to protect me, to be there for me. And I just, in my head at that time, I did not want to drag him down into that darkness. I'm like, you are literally the light. <laughs> you are literally everything up there. I had to pause because I had to cough. <clears throat> it's, it's really blah. Um, but as I was saying, he was literally the light and I was the darkness. And I was like, I don't, you don't deserve this. I don't deserve you. Like, I don't deserve you as a person in my life at all. And so I was already planning to like try to do something to make him hate me so that he would avoid me. <clears throat> and then he did, I won't say unthinkable because it's his heart, not mine, but he decided to confess his romantic feelings towards me. And I was like, <coughs> yeah, sure. This is the opportunity to get him to hate me. I can be very cruel and say very terrible things to him to get him to not want to be around me but I hated myself for it. And yeah, I was really in a messed up place, but I chose to go forward and say hurtful things and be cruel. <coughs> That's where I was toxic. That's where I was this horrible person. I didn't have to be cruel to him <coughs> to try to push him away. I didn't need to push him away. There are so many things that I did that were messed up. The thing that killed me the most was afterwards, he still was my friend. And I <coughs> partially hated him for it. I was really mad at him. I'm like, <coughs> why do you have to be such a good person? Why, why are you still by my side when I'm horrible? awful human being. Like I, I was so mad at him for that. So mad. <clears throat> and <laughs> as a result of him still being a decent human being, even though I was not, I started to fall for him a little bit. All those times I could have fallen for him during high school or just after high school and I didn't. And I started to really care for him in that way. And I thought, <clears throat> I'm in danger of mucking this up even worse than I already have. Because how is that going to be? How is this going to look? Like, I saw you as one of my closest friends. I knew I could trust no matter what. I've purposely tried to not think of you in a romantic way. And then I'm doing all this to try to push you away because I'm planning to not be here soon. <clears throat> I plan to end my life. But then I start to fall for him and I'm like, what kind of messed up individual am I? 
So I was like, I can't, I can't do that. I can't tell him how I feel. I can't, I can't do this. And it was around that time that there were people who, <clears throat> who pushed me further down. I've, I've said it in other videos how there are people who I thought I could tell how I felt and they didn't believe me. No one believed me. I kept getting sidelined. People kept underestimating me and <clears throat> just brushing me off. That sent me further down that spiral of wanting to unalive myself. So I'm in the middle of that spiral when I start to have those feelings towards this, this guy who was still my friend and he shouldn't have been. He shouldn't have been my friend because I was not a good person. <coughs> Sorry. I'm not going to have time this week to do another video. So <clears throat> trying to get it done now, but, uh, okay. Another pause water sepulchral. Okay. I'm not kidding. I'm not going to have any, any time this week or the next week. <clears throat> Either way, it got to this boiling point where Through some sort of twist of fate, I ended up living inside his home for a little bit because my dad kicked me out and I was about to lose my job. I was going through a rough time. And yet again, he had to be a really great guy. <clears throat> and honestly, I was just so self-destructive. And unfortunately, that was me pulling other people along in that destruction. So it's me recognizing I'm probably a horrible individual. I'm doing a lot of toxic things. Yes, am I mentally, emotionally unstable right now? And am I being abused by certain people outside of the situation? And is that kind of rolling downhill onto the other, these other people? Yes, but <clears throat> I could have gone to that friend. I could have told him and I didn't. I just kept going down that road of I need to get him to hate me to the point where he doesn't want to have anything to do with me ever again because <clears throat> he needs to learn that I'm not a good person I shouldn't I don't deserve any sort of kindness I don't deserve like I was really self-hatred still I mean some part of me still is I've done a lot of healing since my divorce with my abusive ex-husband but <clears throat> And I've had to do a lot of <laughs> self-analyzation to, well, there are times when I was not a good person and how can I become a better person? How can I not do those things I did in the past? Well, <clears throat> this is an example of one of those times when I was not a good person and I did terrible things. I said cruel things. I lashed out. I acted out. <clears throat> Again, I was very self-destructed. I definitely was trying very hard to make enemies out of people that I used to consider friends, um, or rather that they considered, you know, me as their friend and I tried to get them to hate me all around. I was just like, if people hate me enough to where they don't care if I die, then, you know, it'll be easier. No one's going to miss me is the logic that I had going on in my head. This is me having dealt with abuse most of my life, having a very toxic family, having PTSD and anxiety and depression, and just not just PTSD, but complex T PTSD, which unfortunately was not diagnosed properly at the time. Me having ADHD and not being properly diagnosed and ignored my entire life. Everything's just this cesspool of awful. <laughs> And I'm internalizing it and not sharing it with anyone. <clears throat> not just because I don't want to drag people down, but because that has been the mantra that I've been groomed and conditioned with is don't ever tell anyone. <clears throat> don't talk about mental illness. Don't talk about any of this stuff. So it was me rec starting to become aware and recognizing all that, but then still deciding to go forward with, I'm going to make people hate me so that when I'm gone, 
they won't be that upset. At some point, <clears throat> after spiraling for so long, I stopped, I paused, I realized I don't want to go. I don't want to do that. It was around that time that I decided that I was going to join the Navy. At this point, I had stopped talking to this friend <clears throat> that I've known since high school that I lived with for a while. And sorry, I probably should have labeled him as like something. So CA, cause those are his initials. So CA. So, um, I had kind of stopped talking to him or rather he had stopped talking to me, which is what I had wanted. So CA had not really spoken to me. Um, because at some point I got out of that, um, his house and went back to my dad's and I went and got an apartment and then I had to go back to my dad's because I was getting out of the apartment. I was going to go into the Navy and it was just this whole mess, but there had been a, a bit of time between being at his house and then joining the Navy. But during that time he had spoken to me, <clears throat> not really. And I thought I thought about trying to repair that relationship. I tried my hardest to consider how I would go about it. And then I realized that I technically got what I wanted. He doesn't want to have anything to do with me and probably never will again. And I made such a mess of things. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to leave him alone because as I keep saying to myself and to others now, and this is when I started to think along those lines, is like, it doesn't matter who it is, how you relate to them or how you know them. If they are toxic, you don't have to have them in your life. So I was thinking I was the toxic one trying to push myself back into his life, that would be horrible. I shouldn't do that. Sometime during the Navy years, the early first couple years. <clears throat> and ironically, I left for boot camp on his birthday, on CA's birthday. And I'm like, <sighs> which is coincidentally the same birthday as another person I used to be friends with in high school. Um, <clears throat> so that was kind of bittersweet. And I was talking to a mutual friend who isn't a friend anymore because he had, because that mutual friend ended up being incredibly toxic and abusive and horrible. And I don't talk to me more because he's, he turned out to be like a psychopath. Um, but I was talking to a mutual and he said that he ran into CA and this was before I met my ex-husband, by the way, because I met my ex-husband pretty early on, like as soon as I went to my first duty station. But this was during my A&C school time in 2009, 2010, before I went to my first duty station and before I met my ex-husband, um, <clears throat> where that mutual friend was talking to me and said, yeah, I ran to the CA and, you know, we were talking and he looked a bit angry when I mentioned that I was talking to you. And I was like, ah, uh, yeah. Mind you, when I had this conversation with that ex-mutual friend, I was really drunk on Virginia Beach because that's where my NC school was by, was Virginia Beach. I was really drunk. And he said, yeah, he was really mad. What happened again? Me and my drunk self decided to pour my heart out, <clears throat> talk about how I was such an awful person, I deserved to die. And how I made this person hate me and then started pouring my feelings about how I was starting to fall in love with him back then. But I was like, no, I can't do that. How horrible would it be that I started to fall in love with this guy after I just did, said and did all these terrible things. And it was just, it was, it was bad. <clears throat> it was bad. It was bad. Cause mutual friend told me later that, yeah, you start saying a whole bunch of stuff. And I was like, Oh, this is why you shouldn't get me drunk. Yeah. Cause I will start pouring my heart out. 
I don't really drink anymore, but back then, yeah. Because when I joined the Navy, I was like 23. So I was, I was, you know, I could get the alcohol. So yeah, got drunk on the beach. Now, granted, I had a couple friends come along right after that conversation and they were talking to me like, are you okay? What's going on? I'm just like, yeah, I may have, uh, confessed a bunch of stuff to this mutual friend about another guy. And they're like, Ooh, you okay? I'm like, no, no, I'm not okay. <laughs> um, years go by. I ended up married to my ex-husband, <clears throat> which ended badly. If you've seen any of my other videos, I'm still unraveling all the bad with that. Sometime in the middle of my divorcing my ex-husband and me going back to, you know, where I'm from in California and just kind of trying to build my life back up, I get in contact with CA's younger brother, who we were also friends at some point, you know, during, during high school and after high school, but there was a falling out and it was mostly due to me being toxic and bad. So... Then after I moved with the kids to another location, um, cause it was too expensive to live in California. Um, I start talking again to CA's younger brother and I start feeling, feeling like really bad. Like I had already felt bad before about being a horrible person to CA in the past. But even though through the younger brother, you know, I would say happy birthday or happy Christmas or, you know, how are you guys doing or whatever. I would, you know, sometimes glean a little bit of information about CA, but his younger brother would tell me that, you know, he's, he's not really online. He doesn't really want to talk to you. You know, it's up to him if he really wants to reach out or anything. And here's the thing that people don't realize that if you were the toxic person, it isn't just a small thing and it isn't just one small moment in time and then eventually gets better because there are people that were so toxic and abusive to me that I will never speak to them ever again for the rest of my life. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. I, I have a right to not forgive. I have a right to not want contact with those people because some things that some people do are unforgivable. I have to recognize that CA may see that in me. He may see me as unforgivable, even if I may have changed, even if I am trying to do better and not be the way that I was back then. Even if that way that I was back then was a period of time and that is, does not equate to the whole sum of who I am. That's the part that hurt him the most. That, that is one part. I, I don't know what else has gone on in his life since then. There could be so many different instances. He could have moved on and, um, is with like some woman or whatever that he loves or, you know, you know, or maybe he's happily single. I don't know. I don't know a lot of those details because I'm trying to not ask those kind of details from his younger brother. Cause even though his younger brother and I are friends and, you know, we've been able to mend what's gone on between us, there was this part that I recognized where I was cruel. I was toxic. I was bad to someone that meant the world to me and who saw me <coughs> in a certain way. And I shattered that image that he had of me. I completely obliterated it. I do not have a right to request or demand or even want to be in his life if he doesn't want me to be in his life because it's up to him. <coughs> Sorry. I had to pause again to take a drink of water. Um, It's up to him <clears throat> what he wants to do. And that may be where he never speaks to me ever again. <clears throat> It's me having to face that reality. I had a dream recently about him, about some good times between us. And I woke up crying. I was very sad. I was very sad that 
guess what? Our actions, our words can have lasting consequences. So even if I feel like I have become a better person since then in many ways, that person may only see that aspect of me and they might not ever see anything I've ever done since then. <clears throat> and it's not up to me to try to change that perspective because it's about their emotions and how they feel. And if they felt that no matter what, I am a toxic person to them and they don't want me in their life, then I have no business trying to change that. So I do the customary, you know, happy birthday through CA's younger brother, but I try not to ask too many probing questions. I try not to, at one point I tried to ask for their address so I can send like a card or something like that to CA, but younger brother's like, I don't think he wants that. So I backed off and said, you know what? That's, that's completely understandable. <clears throat> I think that's something that a lot of people don't realize is that we're so in our own feelings. We're so in our own bubble <clears throat> that we'll think about what's best for us, what's best for other, you know, like, you know, kids or something like that. That's all good and fine. But if someone doesn't want you in their life or someone doesn't want to talk to you because of something that you did, even if it was 20 years ago, 30 years ago, it doesn't matter. <coughs> because you were not them. Their emotions or feelings are valid for them. You have no business trying to change that. So sometimes we have to recognize how we can be toxic. That you may not think that you're a toxic person. You may not think that you've done practically anything wrong. <clears throat> but to that person, you may have. Me, I recognize that I was toxic during a period of time, that I was cruel, that I was hurtful, that I did things that I chose to do. Like, was I really messed up and was I, like, off the deep end? Yes. <clears throat> Mentally, emotionally, I was just all over the place and I was just encased in darkness and I did not see a way out. When you're in that mindset, you may not see options. But I still recognize that I had a close friend that I could have gone to, that I could have told all this to, and I chose not to. So, <clears throat> yes, it could be considered valid that me being in all that craziness could be excused, but I don't want it to be excused. I don't want that to be excused. Sometimes we say or do things out of anger or emotional, like, you know, like sorrow, grief. You know, sometimes we do or say things in a moment that we're pushed our limits. We're doing our best and we're still not quite where we want to be. And that can happen. We can make mistakes. Yes. But I saw what was happening and I chose to still be a certain way, do a certain thing, say certain things. So even though I was emotionally distraught, I was mentally just all over the place. And yes, I had suicide ideation and I was actually planning stuff out to unalive myself at that time. I don't want that to be used as an excuse. I don't want to be excused for it because that's not very responsible. There are consequences for my actions. So <clears throat> this is me recognizing that there are consequences. And one of the consequences is I may never have that best friend back. The one that I had from high school and community college. The one that I knew I could tell anything at any time. The one that I knew had my back no matter what. <clears throat> Even if... I feel that I have become a better person since then. He's not obligated to try to, you know, get to know this new me 
And I feel obligated to not try to force that because I was toxic. I was hurtful. I was cruel. I didn't need to be. <clears throat> and if he goes the rest of his life never talking to me again, that's, that's up to him. And there's nothing wrong with that. So I do this video because I want, I want to show people that there are times when you may think that you've done nothing wrong, but someone feels like you were toxic to them and they want you out of your, their life. Let them. Don't try to pursue that. Don't try to go after them. Don't try to justify things. That's the thing is I don't want my actions to be justified in any way. Yes, my, my mind was where it was. My emotions were where they were. I have been so hurt and abused my entire life. I've gone through so much, but I do not want that to be used to justify my actions towards this person, towards CA, because that's me not taking responsibility. And I don't want to do that. I want to take responsibility. And if taking responsibility means that I never try to reach out to him because it's up to him, he could contact me through his younger brother. He, there are other people that he can contact me through. <clears throat> but, you know, so, I mean, it's, it's not like I'm completely off the grid. If he really wanted to reach out to me, there are ways that he could do it. But it's up to him if he wants to. And I am not going to pursue that. I'm not going to ask those kinds of questions anymore. <clears throat> because I was toxic to him. He has every right to not have me in his life. So just because you don't think that you were toxic doesn't mean that you weren't toxic. I mean, there could be people that you were toxic to. I, I really believe in self-awareness. I really believe in self-analyzation and, and coming to terms with the fact that I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. I am not a pure person. I, I'm, I'm not this wonderful, glorious, like, I just, I don't, I don't like that. I know that I have friends, close friends that will always have my back because they truly believe in me. And they know that even though I'm not perfect, I am trying, I'm doing the best that I can with what I have. And I'm trying to break the cycles from the past. But even still, there's going to be people who think that I was toxic to them and they want nothing to do with me. And this is one example of that. I know that there are other examples, but I wanted to focus solely on this one because this is the one that still <coughs> to this day upsets me. Like I was such an idiot. I was so horrible. It doesn't matter where I was in my headspace back then. I will not use that to justify it. But I have to recognize that I was toxic and I was hurtful and cruel. And <clears throat> these are the consequences for my actions. I may never get that friend back. And you know what? He may have changed a lot over the years. He may be a completely different person. And I hope that he's happy. I hope that he has found peace and happiness in whatever way that presents itself. Like I, I was really upset him back then for still being my friend, even though I was horrible to him. Like, don't do that. Don't be a good person towards me. Like, I don't deserve that. Like I was so horrible to him. I don't feel that way now. I don't feel, I don't, I'm not angry at him. Um, I'm still mad at myself. I don't, hate myself as much as I used to for a variety of reasons, but I, I'm not, I'm still mad at myself. I think that's going to continue. I think that's going to continue because I do feel guilt. I do feel upset at my actions, my words, <clears throat> but I'm, I haven't asked those questions of his, his younger brother because I don't, even though I want to know how he's doing and I'm always curious about that, I don't want to pressure his younger brother. I don't want him to think that, you know, I'm obsessed with him. Like it's just, I just, 
I want this person to be okay. And I want them to be okay because I'm not in their life because I was so horrible to them. Like I want them to have that happy ending um, because I feel like they deserve it. They didn't do anything wrong. They were never horrible to anyone. They were a really good person. CA was such a good person and did not deserve the way I treated him. Did not deserve the way anyone could have treated him in any wrong way. Like he's just, I don't know if he's the same way as he was before, but I know that he was a good soul and a good heart. And that's why I feel so strongly that he should have a good, happy ending, uh, happy beginning, happy middle, just happy everything. But I had to recognize that I was toxic, that I was bad. <clears throat> and sometimes you don't want to, sometimes you really don't want to look at yourself like that, but that's reality. That's life. <clears throat> okay. It's really hard to talk right now. Um, as I said, I'm not going to have any time this week. Maybe not even next week. I have a lot going on. Uh, I hope I don't get sick again. Knock on wood. <laughs> I have a nice, beautiful desk that's wood. So knock on that. Um, <clears throat> yeah. All right. So I will talk to you when I talk to you. I don't know when that will be. Um, wherever you are, I hope you're doing well. So bye.